As we get started here with your CCNA 200 125 video boot camp, I am Chris Bryant and I want to thank you for signing up for this course. We here at the Bryant Advantage know that you have a lot of training options out there and we appreciate you choosing us and for us to be part of your CCNA exam success. We're going to kick off the course, as you would expect, with a section on an introduction to networking and the networking models. Now this will be a refresher for many of you, but I am not assuming prior knowledge of these models. So we are going to go over the two main networking models, take a look at the layers, that kind of thing like you would expect. But I also have some real world advice for you in here. So if you are familiar with the networking models and such, don't skip this section. Don't go ahead to section two because I really want you to hear something I have to say about how you can use these network models to make yourself a better network admin. I really like to fill my courses with some material or some things that I wish people had told me when I was studying for the CCNA and this section is heavy on that. So as we get started with that, a really quick history lesson that does tie in with the rest of the section. And it goes back to the days, maybe 15, 20 years ago, when networking was actually pretty simple, especially compared to today. And that's both good and bad, because back then, let's say you were networking a small office or a high school, and I did both, uh, you know, people were absolutely thrilled when they could print to a printer in another room. They could share some files. They were thrilled not to have to walk down the hallway or to another building and get a Word document from somebody. And especially with the schools that I worked in that had never been networked, it was like, you know, what wizardry is this? Uh, but as human beings will do, after that initial thrill of printing to a printer in another room wore off, your end users, or my end users, that is, wanted more. And nothing wrong with that, because they'd ask, you know, well, what, wouldn't it be great if we keep all of our documents on one computer somewhere and get them from there and share them? And wouldn't it be great if only certain people had certain kinds of access to some of those files? And hey, you know, our company is going to have this video presentation. Can we make it, can we fix it so the employees can see that on their computers? And my favorite, my sister-in-law watches videos of cats doing stuff on the YouTube. Can I do that? That was an actual quote from a meeting on using the internet for greater productivity. And as you might guess after that, the meeting took kind of a downward trend. But in all seriousness, though, whether you've been in the field a long time, whether you're totally brand new to it and you've been using computers in your personal life, just think of all the services that we take for granted today that were fantasies 15 to 20 years ago. You know, voice and video, forget it. Even if it existed, you know, even if you had a video file, your network probably wasn't able to handle it because most networks 15 to 20 years ago could not begin to handle that kind of traffic in any kind of efficient manner. Today, you know, if there's one hiccup in a YouTube cat video, you know, our phones are going off. People really expect a high level of voice and video quality. Now, what about network security? You know, same situation there because having a security certification on your resume in that same time frame, it used to make you, uh, it made you stand out from the crowd. It was a luxury. You know, because network security was once seen by most clients as an extravagance. You know, firewall? What do I need a firewall for? Who's, who's going to try to get into my network? Well, you know, but the network security devices that we have to work with today were barely a glimmer in their developer's eyes, again, in that 15 to 20 years ago. Because, hey, the networks used to just be a few devices that needed to communicate. You had some PCs, you had a printer, maybe you had another printer, and that might be it. But today's networks, of course, have all kinds of devices that need to play together nicely. You have a lot more PCs, you have a lot more printers, you got those firewalls we were just talking about, and all kinds of servers, from certificate servers to e-commerce servers and everything in between. And the thing is, every one of these servers is different. You know, they're running different services and we've got to know how to make them available to our clients because that's where you and I, the network admins, come in. It's our job to get all of these devices to work together in an efficient manner so our clients can do their job while we also work to keep the network secure. Now, there's some security material here in the CCNA curriculum, and of course, there is a separate CCNA security certification I hope you'll look into. But, and the reason I'm mentioning that is that while network security is important, we can't just lock everything down. Cisco actually has a product or a feature in some of their software called One Step Lockdown. 
and you hit this button and you see this huge list of ports that are being closed and addresses that are banned and all kinds of things going on. But the thing is, once it's done, your users probably can't do everything they need to do. So we just can't lock all the doors. We, we have to lock the doors and make sure the right people have the right keys. Now, let me fill you in on why I'm telling you all of this and where we're going here. Because I have been exactly where you are, working on that CCNA certification, working on creating a brighter future for myself and my family. I am not one of these guys that walks around acting like they were born knowing everything in the world about networking. If you've been in the field for a while, you probably know people like that and you hated it. I am definitely not one of those people. The reason I bring this up is that I want to tell you again that I know from experience that studying the particular material in this section, the networking models, TCP and UDP and other networking fundamentals, it's in some ways it's the toughest material in the course to study because we're not on switches and routers doing a lot of stuff yet. It can be a little dry at times. Any theory can. And here's what I'm really getting at. When you're a little tired or maybe a lot tired, you're putting in those extra hours, you're studying this material, you're going to think something that entered my mind one night at the public library when I was studying for the CCNA. Do I really need to know this? Is this something I just need to memorize and kind of get past the exam? You know, can I skip ahead to the next section? Well, allow me to be your voice of experience here. You really do need to know this stuff. And the thing is that need goes well beyond earning your CCNA because knowing this material comes in handy in the real world and in the exam room. And in this course, I'm gonna show you exactly how using the material in this section, particularly the networking models, can make you a network admin who is far superior to those admins who do not use the models. And actually, I'm gonna talk about it a little bit right now before we get to those models. Because there are two kinds of network admins in the world. There really are. Those who have a structured plan for troubleshooting and those who don't. Because for most of us in this field, troubleshooting is most, if not all, of our job. It's not like we go to work every day and all the routers have been right erased and they're just waiting for us to reconfigure them every single day. Doesn't work that way. We end up troubleshooting, whether it's on the phone, in person, or virtually. And you want to be the admin with a troubleshooting plan. And using a network model like the two we're going to look at here shortly can make you that admin. And I'm going to revisit this topic in this section while we take a look at the two main networking models on your CCNA exam, the OSI model and the TCP IP model. And we'll take a look at the OSI model in detail next.